Jesus said, I am the true vine, and as his branches, may you continue to grow in strength and support, knowing his love and mercy for you each day. Amen. There is a place in London, actually a quite famous landmark that many people visit when they are coming to, the, to uh, England, and that is the Hampton Court Palace. You may have heard of this place before, especially if you're a scholar of history. One of the most famous residents of this over 500-year-old castle was Henry VIII. Henry VIII and several of his wives lived in this palace, although originally built for a cardinal, interestingly enough. However, perhaps what is most interesting is not the, ca- the castle itself, but it is what is in the grounds of the castle. On the grounds of the castle, there is co- what is called the Great Vine. The Great Vine is a vine that has been growing for almost 250 years. This vine is around 12 foot in diameter at its base, and the, re- and the branches that go forth from this vine are around 200, and 200 feet long at its the longest uh, as long as stretching. Quite a large plant, isn't it? And each of those plants still continue, each of the branches continue to bear fruit. Perhaps that is what is most amazing. All the way to the very end of those 200 feet away from the base, those little branches are still receiving the strength and support from the root system that they need to bear delicious grapes. Now, I could not help but think about Christ when I thought about that. Not just because Christ is always going to provide for every need we have. But as he used that imagery to describe himself today, I am the true vine, and we are the branches. Notice he doesn't say that he is the vine dresser. That is reserved for the Father. But he is the vine. And as he was speaking to the disciples, we need to know the context here. All the way, starting around John 11, John 12, Jesus begins the the discourses of Holy Week. Here he is talking to the disciples as they're preparing for his death. Well, they don't realize it, but they're, they're in that last week. In fact, they're a very similar place we are today. Except rather than being surrounded by palm trees and citrus trees, they would have been surrounded by these vines. These grape vines would have been just about everywhere they were. So as Jesus was preaching to them, they would have heard, I am the vine, you are the branches, and notice those fruit branches right by them. Now, grapes for the people of the ancient Near East, the people of Israel, were very important. Much more important than they are for us today. For us today, they're a delicious snack. Perhaps some of you enjoy wine and they make a fine wine or a grape juice. But for the people of ancient Israel, not only were they sustenance, fruit, but they also, they needed to ferment it to make the wine, to have water to drink, to to be able to use the water that they had. See, they didn't have the options we do for clean drinking water. So wine became very important, not just for parties or for get-togethers, but for the fa- to keep people healthy. And so when you think about going to Jesus' description here, as the true vine, you see that he does provide for every one of our needs. Not only our spiritual needs, which is most important, but even for our physical needs. Each and every day, He is our strength, He is our support. We receive our nourishment no matter how far out we are of the branches. He is constantly feeding us and strengthening us. But I don't think that's much of a surprise for you folks. I don't think that I'm telling you anything new here. I think this is probably things you've heard before. You've heard, I am the vine, you are the branches, ever the fruit to bear. Now go ye, make disciples of all. Have you heard that? That was a children's song. But we've heard this from the beginning. We know that Jesus is that strength and the support. No, usually probably where we get caught up is the very next verse. And if you have your bulletin in front of you, I would encourage you to turn to to verse 2 there. Because in verse 2, all of a sudden we get the interesting part. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. Well, every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. Black and white, isn't it? There's not really a question at all in our minds of exactly what Jesus is talking about. Either you're alive or you're dead. Either you produce fruit or you don't. There's not two ways about it. Either it's one or the other. And let's look at that first option. This is not a great option for us, is it? We want to be those who produce fruit. We don't want to be cut off because we know what being cut off means. Ultimately, as we see just a few verses down, when you are cut off, you're thrown into the fire. When you are not producing good fruits, then your life is not representative of the faith you have. Now, the other option, though, is not that great, is it? The alternative is not an exciting one either. 
Because here we have those who are pruned. Here we produce good fruits, but we're pruned. How many of us like to be picked and poked at and be, have those things cut off? How many of us enjoy those, that pruning process? How many of you enjoy disappointment, losses, things not going your way? Things that drive you to trust in God rather than yourself. No, neither option would be one that we would pick. I think if most of us had an option, we'd like to pencil in a third option. You know, scribble in the margin there a little bit and say, third option, we get to be fruit on the vine. We get to take the nourishment, soak up the sun. We get to, eat, we get to take in the fertilizer and the water, all that we need. And we just get to hang there, become raisins, and ultimately die and join our Father. Sound good, right? Sounds like a good third option if we could just hang there on the vine. But that's not an option Jesus gives it, is it? It's not an option that we have. Even if we would like to have that option as Christian people, it's not there. But there are many Christian people who, well, they adopt this option. They say, well, I am a good person. I am part of the vine. I am firmly planted and rooted in Christ. So why worry about anything else? I'll just get plump and ultimately... I'll die in my faith. It certainly would be easy, wouldn't it, if that was the case. But that wasn't one of the two options. That wasn't one of the two ways that Jesus said it could go. In fact, rather, He is encouraging us that as He produces fruit in us, that we would produce fruit among others. Our relationship as Christian people is not only that relationship vertically with God, but it also is that relationship with other people. Our relationship with God ultimately is the stem. It is the root. We would have no strength and no support to do anything without Christ. But it doesn't end there, does it? What God is saying, what Jesus is saying here, is that if we believe in Him, if we trust in Him as our Savior, then our, then our lives, we are going to continue to bear fruit among other people. Now, how does this fruit look? What is this fruit? It can be the fruit of spending time in the Word with God either by yourself or with others in Bible study. The fruits that it can be could be the time that we spend in prayer on our knees before God. The fruits that we bear is that time that we spend in church. They're receiving, in each of those cases, not only are we bearing fruits, but we are receiving nourishment. God's constant strength. But it stretches beyond there, doesn't it? The vine reaches beyond that. Each vine is not alone on, on as it's, or each branch is not alone on the vine, is it? Each of us are interconnected with Christ. And so part of the fruits we bear then are the fruits that we bear as people of God. And sometimes we we like to think that this is going to be something that's an impossible task. Something that we have to come up with, that we have to dream up with, that has to be way outside of the box and outside of normal. But God is the vine dresser here. We are not. He plants us in the places in life He wants us. He uses us in the places He needs us. So whether or not you're a father or a mother, A grandma or a grandfather, a son or a daughter, God can use you in each of those situations. Maybe it's the fact that you're a fellow Christian brother or fellow Christian sister who is visiting on on a friend of yours who just received the good news that they had a new grandchild. Maybe it's the fact that it's that you take take a moment to read read scripture with someone who you know doesn't know God's word. See, these fruits are not things that we have to worry about because God, again, is He's shaping and forming us to prepare us. And these fruits then also ultimately will lead us to share with those who are outside of the faith, those who are not part of the vine. And maybe we might get a little nervous there because those outside the vine, maybe we, we think, well, if they take a place, then we're going to receive less nourishment. Well, the truth is, the nourishment that Christ provides through the vine is greater than we could ever imagine or we could ever need. And the truth is, is oftentimes the reason we share our faith is not because we're worried someone's going to take our place in church. But I think it comes back to a greater fear that we have. A greater fear that we won't know what to say or we won't know what to do. A greater fear that we're doing this on our own, that we're going out there sharing our faith or planting those seeds and we're doing it on our own. But that's not the case, is it, at all? Notice, not only did Jesus affirm that He is with us, but we go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, and we see Paul saying, Apollos watered, 
I planted the seed, but who makes it grow? Ultimately, it is the Spirit who makes it grow as members of the vine. It's easy to get into this, this way of thinking that, well, I don't have to do anything more. I don't have to step outside of the box because I'm already on the vine. But that gets at a greater problem, actually. It gets at a problem of our hearts. It gets at a, the question of our relationship with God. How much do we trust God? How far are we willing to go? Many times people say, well, those works, those are works righteousness. But that's not what Jesus is talking about here. The works that we do are a result of people who have been saved, who are sanctified. The works that we produce here, the good fruits, are not those that save us, but those are the result of people who are saved. Those are the results of things we do to care for one another, to share with one another, to bring the love of Christ to others. Because Christ first bore that fruit in us. Because Christ first was that life-giving strength that we needed. Because Christ first shed His blood for us. Sometimes, though, we, we struggle with that. And that's our sinful nature coming out again. Our sinful nature that, whether it's concern or fear, or sometimes I think it's just our, our own pride. That we sit there and we look around and we say, hey, I'm not such a bad person. We look around and say, I'm not as bad as him or I'm not as bad as her. And we may never say that out loud. But we can hear the voice of the Pharisee echo in our head. Thank you, Lord, that I'm not like that publican over there. And so we don't do those good works because we, we kind of keep a tally and we say, oh, I'm not too bad off after all. The truth is, it's not about counting. It's not about how many good works we do or how many we don't do. It's about, it comes back to that relationship in trusting in Christ Jesus as our Savior. Because that is what it means to believe Jesus is the true vine. That is to know that He will provide for all that we need. Whether it is that just as we live each day of our lives as Christian people, or whether or not we are out there sharing our faith on every street corner and block. That is the, the strength and support that we know that Jesus is with us no matter where we are in our lives. That He continues to feed us and nourish us. For to say that Jesus is the true vine is that He is the strength and support when we are weak. To say that He is the true vine is to say that we were so dead in our sins, withering and rotting away, poisoned by our own sin, that, he, that we needed Him to save us. As we welcome Christ Jesus today, we welcome with the palm branches, we welcomed Holy Week, knowing how the week is going to go. We know that the true vine that he, that he went through, the, br the brutal trials, the false trials, that He went through that death, that He poured out His blood so that we might have that blood of life. See, Jesus, the true vine, He is willing to give us all that we need. And God, the vine dresser, He continues to work and cultivate in us each day so that we know exactly what the Lord has in mind for us. I know that I've heard people say time and again, I don't know where the Lord is leading me. I don't know what His plan is for me. But the more time we spend in His Word, the more time we spend in His house, and the more time we spend on our knees in prayer, the more He cultivates that relationship with Him. The more He strengthens us and supports us. And the more He continues to prune us too. And I know, I said it at the beginning of the sermon, pruning us, it's not an exciting idea, is it? It's not exi exciting to think that as we bear fruit that we're going to be pruned back to bear more fruit. But in those times, in those times that God prunes us, in those times that He picks and cuts away those bad leaves, those bad things in our lives, as painful as it may be, those are the times when He is working in us that we may trust Him more as He cuts away those things that are, divide us from Him, He draws us in closer. He draws us in so that we know with full assurance the hope of salvation. And God constantly is working in that soil so that we share that love with others. Think about a vine dresser, someone who prepares vineyards today. 
He doesn't work t- day in and day out, bleeding, broken, preparing vines just so that they grow and get fat, does he? He prepares those vines so that he can share with others. He prepares those vines so that they can go forth, so that those vines can reach to the very ends of the world with his delicious fruits. And that is how our Father is working as he's preparing us to share those fruits, to share those good things that he's done in us. And it'd be nice if that's all it was, wouldn't it? It'd be nice if it was just finished right there. But payment had to be made. Payment had to be made for those withered branches, for those broken limbs. Payment had to be made for those times when we did not trust in God, when we did not put our full faith in Him. And so the true vines made that payment for us. The true vine, He went to the cross. He suffered. He died. He was buried. But He rose again. He rose again so that the true life we receive on this earth, it is not merely the life that we live each day, but it is the promise of eternal life. The true life that we have, that we will celebrate just a week from today. The true life we have knowing our Lord and Savior suffered and died, but rose again so that we might live life and live it to the fullness. And so as the people of God, now we go forth. We go forth not stopped at the resurrection though, but we go forth doing the good things that He has given for us to do. We go forth doing those good things not for our salvation, not for our improvement, but to share the love of Christ with others, to share the hope of salvation with others, to share the promise of the resurrection with all those who have not tasted and seen that the Lord is good. Let us pray. Christ Jesus, we know that we are sinful people. We are people who would joyfully get fat on the vine, being lazy grapes, rather than going out, sharing those good fruits with others. But help us. Help us to know that your plan was not for us simply to find joy in our salvation, but to share that joy with others. For our joy cannot truly be realized until we share that good news with all those who have lost who have lost their lives in this world, who have withered and died apart from You. Lord, help us to be Your servants, to go forth, sharing those good fruits with others. Help us to know that You are the true vine and that no matter where we are in this life, You are our nourishment and You are our strength. No matter how small a branch we feel we are, reassure us that You can use us. And Lord, as we enter this holy week, as we enter this week of Your passion, May we know your great compassion. May we know your great love for us, your mercy and your sacrifice, and know that it makes us new each and every day. And may your peace be upon us now and always. Amen.